Hey guys, it's another update video plus a new colony. First, let's take a look at my Tetramorium by Coronatum. First, the negatives. They dig out the cotton in their test tubes. Sometimes they get all the way through and the few drown, which is sad. But the most annoying thing is the cotton they pull out, they turn into this thick, sticky piles that feel like they're cemented onto the floor. I literally use a plastic scraper from B&Q to get it up and they will hang out on it. So when I remove the waste, I have to put back all the workers. And on a tidy up clean, this is as good as it gets. I'm sorry, I think this video started too negatively because they destroy barrier too fast and they agitated me from the start. But let's get to the good parts. Tetramorium bicoronatum are a really cool species. I've had them for a quite a few years now and I've kept them fairly manageable by repeatedly splitting the colony. The biggest I've ever let them get is probably about four times the size they are now. And when splitting them, the smallest I've ever let them be is about a fifth of one test tube. With them being inbreeding species, you could fairly easily limit the growth by removing elates. Removing elates is kind of the theme for this video, you'll see later. With summer coming brings a new wave of elates. I took some future queens out to show you. I could leave them out to slow down the colony, but I'm growing mine again, so they'll be going back in. They are much harder to spot in the chaos without their wings. Now for my favourite thing about Tetramorium, feeding them. On the menu today, a jelly pot, millworms, millworms about to turn into beetles, and dubia roaches. I don't really usually use the millworms turning into beetles, but I needed to get rid of them, and the tetra ain't fussy. About 10 seconds in, and they have discovered everything. What do you think will be their favourite? Trigger warning, this roach is fully decapitated. It's eating itself. Then this poor worker walks up, sees what's happening, freezes in shock, backs up slowly, then walks away. Back to the buffet. I added some dessert, some blue Antantic sugar snap. The clear loser so far is the jelly pot. Roaches and millworms seem to be going down well. And even an elate has come out for the sugar snaps. Feeder insects are definitely the way to go. Tetra will get through a jelly pot once they have no real protein left but feeder insects for the win. I'm surprised they went for the millworms turning into beetles as much as they did. I thought they absolutely stunk when I cut them off and thought that might put them off. The morning after, roaches are basically shells, just the exoskeletons left. They're still processing the millworms. The sugar snaps is obviously gone. And now there's no better option, they are starting to show interest in the jelly. I think I might do a mini series on the Tetra, Tetra versus food, and try them on loads of different things. Next up, my new colony, Acanthomermex. I'm not attempting pronouncing the second part, and I said probably said the first part wrong as well. I have only just got them, so I don't have much footage. The majors are just awesome. There's lots of stock coming in them. Uh, Antantics at the moment for Ancon and I swore I wouldn't buy anything yet but well I did. I fed them once and just fell in love with them and I got the buzz of getting a new colony and the joy of knowing that they don't grow very big and they will never cost me money. They're super healthy and stunning and if you already know I've had well I've still got Thailandesis but they had a major setback now, I know what I did wrong. After a couple of years with Thailandesis, they started producing elates. And unlike Tetramorium bicoronatum, elates benefit them, but they don't in other species. 
These elates became such a drain on resources that the colony collapsed. The Queen stopped laying completely. Worker numbers dropped so fast and I thought it was the end of my funny duckers. I removed nearly all of the elates and hoped for the best. I've just now seen my first new worker, the light yellowy one. And there's fresh eggs and larvae in there too. Here is a major wearing two eggs on its head, thinks she's going for the Hello Kitty vibe. But lesson learned, remove elates when they can't benefit the colony. And that leads me into my next sad moment where I had lost another colony due to too many elates. These messers. This messer colony of mine are just living out their days with me now. The elates won. In the wild they would have flown away, but in artificial setups they just became too much of a drain on the colony. Some of the queens had removed their wings early on, or the workers had chewed them off, so it was hard to know what to remove back then. And now there are only winged elates left, plus workers. What was once a big thriving colony is now so small and will never grow healthy again. Queens, mouths, majors and workers have been used in talks and shows to show the life cycle of the species which is pretty cool that they are still an educational benefit and it's my first colony to get new queens and males apart from the inbreeding species i will miss them but i won't miss how messy they are i really do try and keep all of my setups clean but these little ass wipes poop on every bloody wall next up Campanotus nicobarensis. Here is the beautiful queen. She's doing really well at the moment. Definitely a population boom on the way. Now some of you may remember my first ever Nico colony and I loved them so much until they became a total nightmare. They had a couple of big nests and two big outworlds and they were at a few thousand workers and it was as if overnight they learnt how to chew things. They cut up all the fake plants in their setup, and I used to joke that they were my first ever leaf cutters. And then they literally started chomping up their Ants Canada outworld. All the vent holes became massive openings. And I used to keep all of my ant colonies in my living room. And they were everywhere. They got out on the walls, on the ceiling, the windows, the curtains, the sofa, the TV unit, everywhere. They even got into my dog's crate and was eating his pig's ear and other treats. I thought one day I was going to wake up to my chihuahua Frederico being eaten by Nikos. Anyway, so months before the first ever Antcon back in 2022, I rehomed them. And I remember coming back home from Antcon months after I'd given them away. And my husband handed me a tub with hundreds of Nico workers in there. I have no idea for sure where they held up for so long. I assume it was inside the curtain pole. And they are so hardy that I think they just hibernated in there and only came out once it warmed up. And then them workers eventually died. And then I swore off Nikos for life. And then I think it was about a week later, I won this queen and began to have another Nico colony and since then I've just accepted my fate that I'm meant to have Nikos. These are part living in a Saturn and part in an EA nest and to be fair they are a great species especially when you are looking for getting into exotics because they are quite hardy and very forgiving. They are very fast growing and pretty so there's always something going on and something to see. They just wasn't in my plans. Making them part of this video and seeing them eat and doing all their cool stuff is making me like them again. And it's not that I didn't like them before, they just have been more of a feed and leave alone species. But I think spending this bit of time with them, filming them and seeing them properly and not just having them on a shelf dumping in food, I think I might do something with them again. But for the people who remember me posting my sugar snaps races in group chats on Instagram years and years ago, I think I might start doing something like that again, because they were fun. And last but not least, one of my Manica Rabida colonies. 
they sort of stopped doing anything from around the end of September. The Queen definitely took the winter off. She slowly began laying again, so fingers crossed she gets back going. They are my fear factor colony. I'm always worried that the Queen will just drop dead without warning. And I've always had this with this species. But I'm hoping she's playing the long game and slow and steady will win the race. Think this has got to be the slowest manica queen that's still productive I've ever had. But like I said, she's alive and still growing her family. Antimatters did an awesome video on his manica about six or seven months ago, and his were insanely cool. With mine, I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing and hope they have a little boom in worker numbers. I would also love to hear how everyone else is getting on with the manica challenge too. Anyway, that's all for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.